I hope this will be an encouragement for those who see God the way I see God and even though it costs you everything that you keep holding on and keep relying on God and I want to tell you my story today because I was always a Christian and I want to tell you how I ended up here in Texas because I was always a Christian so I, I was just a boy who was very lonely I had a lot of friends but always, I was always seeking for something. It was like um, the world didn't make any sense to me. So when I was like 35 years old, I I started dating a woman, and she was into spirituality. And I started reading these books, esoteric books, and uh, all kinds of books about um, the secret and um, the meaning of life and spiritualism. And uh, they gave me some answers. They give me answers why people react a certain way. And um, I started seeing the world in a different way. But I went deeper and deeper into it. I started working with crystals and tarot cards and meditations. And um, basically I lost all my masculinity and became very feminine in my mind. In the sense that I was oversensitive. I, get, I couldn't even walk in crowds without sweating, without being anxious. So um, I had to walk away from that. I had to become a man again, a man of the world. But it didn't work out. But I, I did make a lot of money. I worked on a ship, two weeks on, two weeks off. And in the two weeks I was off, I was always lonely, even though I had girlfriends and friends. So I went to bars every night drinking, drugging, dating, but I didn't know what love was and I wanted to know, but I thought I did, I thought I knew, but I didn't know. So one day I came off board with my pocket filled with money and I was on my way to a bar, my usual bar and um, across the square in front of the bar were people preaching, evangelizing in the street. And something drew me to them. And the man said to me, how are you doing, Chris? And I said, well, I'm fine. I got money, I got a nice house. I got many girlfriends, I'm doing fine. And he said, yes, but you have no rest inside, do you? And I had to admit that I did not have rest inside. I was restless. And right there, already, something happened. Because I didn't argue with him. I didn't stay in this pride that everything was okay. I humbled myself and I said, you know what, you're right. He said, that's because you don't know God. And I said, if this is it, or what I've been looking for all my life, I want to know. And he said, can I pray for you? I said, sure. So he put his hand on my shoulder and I started praying to the Father in Jesus' name. Something happened right there. I felt so much peace, so much rest. And... Um, I left the man and I, did, I didn't want to go to that bar. I went back home and I sat on my couch and I felt so much peace. I never felt that before. And this is where my life started to change. Not immediately because I still struggled a lot. I struggled with all my desires. They, get, they became even stronger. It was like the devil didn't want to let me go. So this group of evangelists handed me a card of a little church and I um, called that number and I said, you know what, I've, I don't know what happened to me. Well, I do know, but everything is so different now, but I'm under attack. I, I feel I feel awful, I uh, mixed feelings, he said, but the devil is attacking you. So I went over to the church and uh, this was my first church experience. But my connection to God became so strong I started reading my Bible, even on board, in the middle of the night, on deck, under a lamp. I was reading and reading and reading. And I just wanted to seek God for myself. And uh, already I had it in my spirit not to pin myself down in one church, but to just let God lead me. So I started to really see what happened, that God really was in my life. 
So I started to talk about God on Facebook and uh, made a few videos. And uh, but more and more, I drew away from the old, from my old friends. And I was more and more home, just praying and praying and seeking. And um, this is where I really felt that I really wanted to be a disciple. So there was this person in England, because I was still in Holland. And she said, if you're ever in England, please come over and give your testimony. Because she read everything on Facebook. And months went by. And then I was like, how am I going to go to England? I don't know anybody there. And God said, just trust me. The way, you know, the way God speaks to you in different ways, trust me. And, uh, but I, have no, I had no clue. But the door opened up and I just wanted to go to England and preach the word of God. And another street preacher said, Chris, let's go. Let's do this together. But God closed that door, but he opened another one. So I gave everything I had away, my stuff. Um, I stopped going to work. I gave it up. Even my girlfriend, everything. My self-sufficiency, my career. I had no money from my parents, friends. I had nothing to back me up, but I went anyway. Just trusting in God. So I ended up in this group, giving my testimony, and from there I was invited in different homes, sometimes small houses. They gave me a little room with a bed, and we prayed all night, and wonderful things happened. Maybe I can give some testimonies about those, these things in another video. But um, I was just walking around through the hills of the Midlands of England, and just seeking and seeking. So I went to this lady's house for a while, my first lodge's house. I started working for an agency. Yes, this was my bathroom. And then I went to another house and I ended up in Northampton and I lived in a small room and I loved it. I loved every inch of it. It was mine. And I just made enough money to pay for the rent and buy food. But I had so much faith that God was going to do something. And before I knew it, I was in Dubai and Kuala Lumpur. Yes, there are Christians there too. In this case, people from Pakistan. And I never asked anybody for money. I didn't save up money. I didn't call ministries, can I go along? These things just happened. And I came back to England and, um, you know, just even working for an agency, making a little money and still helping poor people, giving my last dime away. And God always repaid me threefold, tenfold. And um, I started to preach in the streets here and there. And uh, I went to London a few times to speak his corner, trying to convince Muslims that the Trinity is real, even though I always struggled really explaining it. And uh, I met pastors, they became my friends, and uh, they didn't like my message. I always told them that you have to fully rely on God. And what I often saw in these groups is that they fully rely on each other and that's a good thing Jesus said you have to love one another but what I was always missing is love God first in other words if you lose your fellowship if you lose your church if you lose these things what is left of your faith and they didn't like that message so I went from church to church and um, even an old pastor who uh, used to train pastors he saw something in me but also God closed that door and I started more preaching I met three preachers and uh, yeah for the next few years I was just me and God fully relying on God even though my, I had no career I worked for an agency I had no money backing me up and wonderful things happened
but I also made mistakes and struggled sometimes and God allowed me to make mistakes. He was teaching me. I thought I knew it all in a sense, but now I realize God was also teaching me and preparing me. And what you always see in churches, they want to control you. They want to tell you what to do, but I wanted to, I wanted God to guide me and show me and rebuke me. Even though sometimes I took the advice of others, I still wanted to be me and God. So then one day I was in my room and I just had an epiphany, just, just the same epiphany God gave to Peter, that Jesus is the Messiah, the son of the living God. And I started to searching. I started to go over scripture again. I started to read what it says in the Greek. And I stumbled upon other teachers who could explain me certain things. And the whole thing changed. Jesus was no longer eternity. Jesus was the son of the living God. Now everything started to make sense. So I went to the church and started talking about it. Excited. It all made sense. And they hated me. They rebuked me. And they hated me. They rebuked me. Even one day they invited me because they said, Oh, Chris, what you're teaching, we're very interested. So after work, I didn't even eat. I just took a quick shower and went over there with my last money, with a taxi, so I would be on time. And they started to argue with me. I said, I thought you wanted to hear what I had to say. No, Chris, they said, we want to bring you back in the love of Jesus because you denied eternity. I was called a devil. I was no longer in the love. I was no of God. I was no longer saved. I was a lost soul who didn't know God. That's what they told me. And um, so I left. But God was still with me. And God was already speaking to me for the last years that I was going to end up in Texas. He said it in different ways. I had different testimonies about that. And then the door opened. Plane tickets came in and I ended up in Texas. Some churches wanted to hear what I had to say, but oh, <laughs> it uh, turned out that they didn't like it at all. One church even closed the door for a whole Sunday. They had a meeting because this Chris who came over, he teaches that Jesus is not God Almighty, but the son of the living God. Panic broke out because of the truth. Then I got married. I found a wife God promised me years ago. He promised me a wife that would be perfect for me. And we got married. And now I'm on Facebook. And I want to go verse to verse. I want to show you everything I've learned. And I may not be perfect in anything, in everything. And there are still things I need to learn. But the things I do know, I'm going to share. Because when you go on YouTube and you see all these world famous teachers, all they do is teach you what they have learned in the Bible school, depending on what school you go to. I was back in England, I was thinking about going to the Charles, Charles uh, Spurgeon school, but it was 40,000 pounds. It was like $60,000. Oh boy, let's say I had $60,000, I would have learned everything about the Trinity. I'm so glad God protected me, never gave me that money to go there. And even though I didn't understand things at the time, now I do. When I look back, I understand. I understand why I didn't stay in these churches, in these groups. I understand why I didn't go to Bible school, because God wanted to show me through the spirit of truth, because the spirit of truth will guide you in all truth. And it is not from one moment to the other. It's a process. So all I want to do is encourage you, keep seeking. Some people come to this knowledge that Jesus is the Messiah and the Son of the living God and not God himself. They suddenly start to lose friends on Facebook or they start losing their fellowship. Suddenly they can't go to church no more. And they lose, they lose the faith. So they go back 
to eternity. Just so they can have fellowship again. Just so they can have likes on Facebook again. And I tell you, when you really see this truth, you cannot go back. And everything changes. Everything starts to make sense. Every single person who comes to this truth says to me, Wow, it finally makes sense. But you have to unlearn things. You have to realize the religious deceptions we're in. We have to realize that the Reformed Church came out of the Catholic Church, not out of the first century Christianity. So I'm going to go over the, all these verses one by one and hope you will find the truth too. And not just learn about God, but also learn and know God. Jesus said that he may know you, Father. Sometimes you have to let go of everything. Jesus said, if you're not willing to let go of everything, you're not even worthy of me. I'm not saying that you have to radically just give everything away and go to a different country, like I did. God calls people in different ways. God gives faith in different measures. But you have to let go of everything that stands between you and God if you really want to seek God and have revelations, new revelations, learn more and more things. So, I hope this will encourage you. Don't give up. Don't give up no matter if you lose everything because God is real. And if he sees that your heart is set on seeking his face, he will provide for you. That's his promise. But seek ye the kingdom of God first. And I think it is very important to understand who Jesus is. That's why so many people lose their faith in Christianity. Because they cannot handle the contradictions no more. And when they go to the pastor, all they hear is, well, it's a, it's a mystery, you just have to accept it. But more and more people, a mystery is no longer good enough for them. They want the truth. And the truth shall set you free.